You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. So the next article I wanted to read was something from Yahoo Finance. It's finance.yahoo.com, and it's basically just talking about the stock market and the you know the whole situation surrounding it right now so let's give it a read and see what it says stocks on friday plunged to a three-year low closing out their worst week since the 2008 financial crisis and obliterating all of the gains made since donald trump was inaugurated as investors weighed the escalating coronavirus outbreak against vast stimulus measures designed to mitigate the crisis. The losses, which came to more than 4% for the S&P 500 and Dow during Friday's session alone, brought the S&P 500's total weekly losses to 15% for its worst weekly performance since October 2008. The Dow swan-dived 17.3% on the week, with all the benchmarks setting at their lowest level since early 2017. So a lot of people may not know exactly like what the Dow is, what the stock market is or how it operates or whatever else. Let me just give you guys like a basic primer for how this works. Okay, so the Dow, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and there are some others. They're basically, they're what's called industry standards, I think, or industry indexes. And they... They pretty much take the stocks of like 500 companies within a specific industry. I think the Dow is supposed to take a broad range of companies, not just from a specific industry. But they take like Microsoft and Apple and Google and Netflix, and those are all tech stocks, but they take stocks from across the board, airline stocks and train stocks and everything like 500 companies, and they average the the values out, and then you can go to Google and just look at them. So here are the stocks that you find in the Dow. You've got 3M, American Express, Apple, Boeing, Caterpillar, Chevron, Cisco. So you've got some tech stocks, you've got some oil stocks, uh, you've got Boeing, which is a uh, plane, airplanes and things like that. It's also linked to the military. You got IBM, Home Depot, Goldman Sachs, banking stocks, General Electric, ExxonMobil, Dow DuPont, the Walt Disney Company. So it's a broad range of different companies across the spectrum. Walmart, Visa, Verizon, United Health, so on and so forth, right? So that's the Dow. And they basically take averages of every one of these companies' stock prices and they list them, you can see what the stock market is doing right now. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So this is an average of all the companies that I listed just now. Um, this is what their stocks are doing right now. Some of them are actually doing better. Some of them are doing worse. For example, Walmart's stock is doing really well, last I checked. Well, Walmart is an up and down kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. It's a very tumultuous time right now. This is like one month. This is six months. See, Walmart is up and down, up and down. And my guess is because people know that Walmart is going to be selling things like absolute crazy right now. Naturally, you would expect for Walmart to be worth a lot more money, right? They're bringing in a ton of revenue. They're getting a ton of customers. But then they realize that Walmart can't keep up with the demand, at this moment, they're not getting enough product coming into their stores because of everything, you know, because of all the panic buying and everything like that. So they see all these empty shelves on Walmart and they realize there's a lot of pessimism about Walmart and they're like, they can't handle it. So their stock starts to plummet. And then they see all these customers coming in and it shoots right back up and then it plummets. It shoots back up. See, when you see things like this with the Dow Jones, the industrial average, what you're seeing here is general pessimism in the market. It's a general distrust that these companies are going to be able to pull themselves together and, and, and make it through. But if there's one fact that you need to know about the stock market, about the American economy, and honestly about the American spirit, about the world spirit, is that it will always bounce back. People will always come back. 
I learned that the hard way going through all of my stuff, you know, losing my family members and everything else. I learned the hard way that whether you like it or not, you will make it through. There is no quit button. And there's no quit button on the economy either. We kind of hit a pause button at this moment, but everything is going to resume. And it sounds to me like the U.S. government is going to be bailing these companies out, which is pretty controversial, but it's a decision that I agree with. I think that we should bail these companies out. We should also bail out the American people. We should be giving stimulus packages, which it sounds like we're going to be doing. But these companies failing is going to be devastating to the U.S. economy. They employ tons and tons of people. If United Airlines or American Airlines or or whatever, as some airline, went out of business, do you know how many people would lose their jobs? They employ so many people. It would be devastating if they couldn't bounce back from this. So these companies will bounce back. They will. And that's why I say, even if it, even if it has to come from, uh, from government bailout, they will bounce back. That's why I'm going to say this now. It is a wise decision to invest in the stock market right now. Look at this. Stock prices are bottoming out. This is a bigger drop then we have seen, we've only seen a drop of this magnitude on the stock market a total of two other times in history. 1987 was the worst drop to the stock market in all of U.S. history. And it was worse than the 1929, uh, what do you call it, Black Tuesday stock market crash. It was worse than the thing that sent us into the Great Depression, the 1987 drop was. So this information may be updated. This is a fluid situation, but as far as the last I checked, the stock market plummeted the worst ever in U.S. history in 1987, second worst in U.S. history today, this month, and third in U.S. third worst in U.S. history in 1929, right before the Great Depression. That's my understanding of it. That's the most up-to-date information that I have. Like I said, the stock market is going to bounce back. Right now is a really good time to invest in a Roth IRA or something like that. Right now, I can't give you any specific stocks that you should invest in because I genuinely don't know. I can't tell you what companies are going to go out of business and and which aren't, but everything is just dirt cheap right now because the stock market is crashing and there's just an insane amount of pessimism in it right now. I'm not invested in the stock market at all. I don't even have a Roth IRA because up to up until like the past year, I have been dirt poor. I have been under the poverty line basically my entire life. And now I'm just just under the median income for the U.S., I think, or maybe just above it. I could probably start investing in the stock market at some point just based on my income, but I haven't. I don't have any kind of savings or anything like that. So the stock market crashing is something that largely affects wealthy people, and for that reason, it hasn't affected me in any way, shape, or form. But the poor are going to start seeing the results of it soon because we're not going to be able to get jobs i guess i still think of myself as under the poverty line but i'm i'm not anymore i guess i'm probably close to the median income but anyway they won't be able to get jobs uh pretty soon prices are going to plummet for a lot of things that those are going to be the the natural results of the stock market crashing the reason that I know so much about the stock market, even though I've basically never invested in it in my entire life, is because my dad actually worked with a stock broker company for like years. And I learned all about how the stock market worked when I was like 12 for that reason. I built like a stock market simulator and everything at the time, like out of C. I think I wrote it in the language C. But anyway, the stock market is an interesting thing to watch at this immediate moment. There will come a point with it where it's going to do what's called bottom out, where this is as low as it's going to go, and it, it, it won't go any lower. It's going to probably stay stagnant for a little, little bit longer, 
and then it's going to shoot up. Naturally, that's what's going to happen with the stock market. That's just how it works. But nobody knows where the bottom is yet. It dropped 10,000 points. That is insane. We were at 30,000 points. That is, that is a representation of our entire economy. 30,000 points. That's where we were. And it dropped below 20,000. So it, it dropped by 33%, literally wiping out all of the gains that, that the Trump era brought in. This is the progression from 1980 to now with the stock market. So you can see a, a just a natural progression upward, right? Over the course of eight years, it rose 250%. Then 1987, we had this giant drop, just sudden drop. And then there was a recovery. We went from 1987 all the way up to 1998. Now, 1998, we had Bill Clinton in office. But you can't really credit all of these gains, this huge hump right here. You can't really credit all of that to Bill Clinton. It was largely the dot-com bubble is what it's called. It's basically where the internet was gaining in popularity. There were all these websites that you could buy and sell things on, and it was a new revolutionary thing. Um, this is around the time when Google was forming, uh, 2003, I think, 2002, somewhere in there. 2001, September 11th, you, you can see this giant drop right here where you know all that stuff happened that I'm not going to say because I don't want to get the video shut down again. And the stock market crashed again. The stock market completely shut down. That killed all of the momentum from the dot-com bubble. But there was a little bit of a recovery through the years. And then the Iraq war, another fall. But slowly but surely, from 2003, started to grow again. And then 2008, boom, just nuclear missile just ran right into the stock market, just destroyed it. Obama... Uh, came into office January 21st, and or I'm sorry, January 20th, and he had this huge crisis to solve. So right here, March 6th is where it bottomed out. So it really started to fall about September 2008 is when it really started to dip, and it dipped until March 10th, give or take. So about six months of bottoming out and not, not improving at all. Then March 6th, all the way until Trump got elected, it, we had steady growth. There, was a, there have been a few times during Trump's presidency where the stock market has kind of had its ups and downs because there was a general sentiment of pessimism. People didn't really trust him to do the job correctly uh, or, or various other different problems that, that inspired people to pull their investments out of the market or pull their retirement funds out of the market or whatever else. But generally speaking, the market has always kind of bounced back. There's a giant dip on Christmas Eve of 2018, I believe. that Everybody thought the market was preparing to crash there, but it, it bounced back. It made it. And now here we are. March 20th, 2020, oh, give or take, uh, you know, the date isn't exact. And it has fallen 34%. Holy hell. I have never in my entire life seen a market fall that hard. So the point here is if you're going to invest in the stock market, I think that's an extremely wise decision, even $100. Put something in the stock market but wait until you feel like it's bottomed out adequately before you do, because it will come back. It will.